Have you ever wondered what the first farmers of Northern Europe used to cook and eat? Well, I have, and there is this new study on plant use during the Neolithic period at the Frühlund site in Denmark that might illuminate things. Spoiler alert, it might not have been bread, or at least not all the time. So the study gives insight into main crops, gathered plants, food preparation, micro remains and contextual findings, and it focuses on the so-called funnel beaker culture as a time period that would be between about 4000 and 2800 BC. So it was one of the first agricultural societies in Northern Europe, and it spanned regions in present-day Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, and uh, Sweden. And it, it, it is interesting for us for the study of prehistory because it marked a significant shift from foraging to farming, although hunting and gathering continued to supplement diets. So we don't have this clear-cut uh, progress from foraging to cultivation, but rather it's kind of like a mixed story. The key characteristics of this particular culture are the construction of monumental graves and long barrows, the cultivation of early cereal crops such as barley and emmel, as well as the use of grinding stones, pottery, and early food processing tools. At most sites, with the, uh, the funnel beaker culture, we have cereals grounded into flour or boiled into porridge. But this particular site, the Frugalund site, is interesting because the cereal remains suggests mainly porridge or gruel preparation, aligning with trends across uh, northwestern uh, Europe. The main crops identified here are durum wheat, the Triticum turgidum, the subspecies durum, that's the dominant crop and that suggests unique cultivation at Frienlund. Uh, but also you have emma wheat, that would be the Triticum turgidum, a subspecies Dicocum. That's a common crop across all the sites with funnel beaker uh, culture. And then you also have naked barley, that would be Hordeum vulgare, variety nudum, that is found uh, frequently but in smaller quantities. And you also have some quantities of Triticum monococcum, uh, possibly derived from, uh, from the tops of emma wheat ears. With regard to cultivation, the combination of three free threshing wheat, that would be durum, and the hulled wheat, that would be emma, suggests separate cultivation rather than mixed cropping. And evidence of cereal processing near house structures points to on-site grain storage and preparation. Now, these early farmers would also gather a lot of fruit. For example, hazelnuts. We have shell fragments quite abundant. That suggests hazelnuts were collected and processed uh, quite frequently. You also have wild berries such as blackberry, raspberry, and possibly dewberry as well, but found in smaller amounts. And then you also have roots and tubers uh, identified, indicating exploitation of underground uh, storage. And you also have other woodland fruit such as uh, crab apple and lime fruit. The most interesting part of the study, however, is the one involving the preparation itself, so the food preparation techniques. 14 grinding stones dating back to about 3600 BCE were studied for botanical micro remains that would be starch and uh, phytoliths. Some were found near or inside early Neolithic structures and others were found in reused uh, burial monuments. The stones are among the oldest in Denmark to undergo such a complex analysis, making them significant for the understanding of early food preparation techniques. The grinding stones were likely used to process wild plants, so not cereals, and that suggests that cereals were prepared through boiling or some other methods rather than milling into, into flour. The micro remains indicate possible grinding of oak and other uh, wild uh, taxa. The stones themselves vary in material and shape, with some showing uh, signs of concave wear, suggesting a prolonged use. The types of rocks uh, are also interesting. We have gneiss, that will be a metamorphic rock. It's a coarse-grained and durable and ideal for grinding. You also have granite, that will be common for grinding slabs due to its hardness. And you also have chert, which is less common but uh, efficient for grinding small seeds. The dominance of wild plants remains one of the contrasts with the abundant cereal grains found in macro remains, implying that cereal grains were likely processed through boiling rather than grinding into, uh, into flour. 
and the grinding stones were reserved for processing nuts, berries, and other wild plants, possibly for not only for food preparation, but also for medicinal use or for creating uh, dyes of some kind. The grinding stones from the Friedland site were not merely utilitarian tools for processing food. Their placement in burial monuments and ritual contexts suggests deeper symbolic meanings. And this pattern is actually reflected uh, throughout the Funnel Beaker cultural sites, where grinding stones held social, ritual, as well as potentially spiritual significance. With regard to the burial context, for example, several grinding stones were found incorporated into monumental graves or used to cover coffins. At Friedland, stones from, uh, from household usage were later reused in monuments during the second phase of the culture, suggesting a transition from uh, daily activities, uh, daily uh, life to ritual use. In uh, some facades and monuments, they were also used. Sometimes they were placed on the facades of monumental enclosures, indicating they might have been considered markers of status or some kind of boundary objects with protective or symbolic uh, functions. And that's actually quite logical because in early agrarian societies, uh, tools used in food preparation would have been seen as representative, uh, as symbolic of life-sustaining processes. So, Carbonized food remains suggest cereals were cooked into porridge or gruel. That is the main point of the study. Half-dried fruit and carbonized seeds point to drying and storage practices. And there are also arable weeds found, such as fat hen, red shank, and sorrel, indicating long-term cultivation as well as summer crops. The presence of wheat and underdeveloped grains points to secondary cereal processing at the site, with primary threshing likely happening elsewhere. High quantities of wheat segments near the houses suggest um, dehusking and cleaning activities occurred very close to the settlement. So how do we know about all this? The methods are also extremely interesting. First of all, you have the macro remains analysis. So the carbonized seeds, fruit and underground storage organs were recovered from samples using flotation and sieving. The macro remains were systematically analyzed for plant identification and quantified to track species diversity and abundance. The spatial distribution of macro remains was mapped to understand crop storage and processing areas. The micro remains analysis is the second part. Uh, here you have uh, phytholiths, that would be silica bodies from plants, and starch granules that were extracted from grinding stones. This involved careful brushing, uh, dry and wet methods uh, uh, both, to avoid contamination, followed by chemical extraction to isolate micro uh, remains. Phytoliths were identified using microscopy and compared against reference collections for species identification. In conclusion, Grinding wild plants aligns with seasonal gathering practices, supplementing diets based on cultivated cereals. And this combination of carbonized cereal grains and the grinding of wild plants reflects a dual strategy of these old societies, farming supplemented by foraging. Hazelnuts and berries might have been used to add nutrients and even just flavor to porridge and gruel, reflecting an early and diverse diet. The Friedland site fits within the broader pattern of this funnel beaker culture, but also shows unique features in plant use and food preparation. So the distinctive aspects would be um, the use of durum wheat, more prevalent that, uh, than at other uh, similar sites, where emma and uh, naked barley dominated. And then you have these grinding stones uh, that reveal a focus on processing wild plants, whereas other funnel beaker culture sites show more direct cereal processing. And last but not least, you have the plants that are gathered, the variety of wild plants, particularly uh, berries, reflecting a continuation of foraging practices from the Mesolithic. So I hope this was somewhat interesting for you. I don't really talk about Neolithic uh, agriculture on this channel, so I thought it might be an interesting twist given uh, all these new methods uh, used nowadays to better understand peoples and cultures way before writ writing uh, systems. If you want to investigate the topic by yourselves, I linked the study in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching as usual and uh, till next time.